Um, hi everyone, I'm Bing Shen Zhang from Lancaster University. I'm a program director of the Cybersecurity Master Program here. Uh, our master program is uh, one of a few fully recognized by GCHQ. Uh, now it's known as NCSSC. Our university is also uh, among the first eight uh, certified by GCHQ as an academic center of excellence in cybersecurity research. Today I'm talking, uh, I'm going to talk about a treasury system project, which is in collaboration with IOHK and it's a sub project under the Cardano. So when we are talking about the treasury, uh, we need to first go back to the uh, blockchain. So when we say it's a blockchain, it's a cryptocurrency, that's not a company. So the cryptocurrency itself does not have a money support. The blockchain itself does not have money support. I mean the real life money. So the treasury system aim at solving two things, how the funds come from and how the funds are decided to use. Um, so if you think about the current funding uh, strategy, maybe there are some uh, non-profitable organization uh, such as the Bitcoin Foundation, Ethereum Foundation. They say they are volunteered to uh, take in charge of developing, maintaining the underlying cryptocurrencies or the underlying blockchains. Uh, that's a way of fund those cryptocurrencies. Some other ways like uh, ICO, you pre-mine some, some coins and you sell them and you get a lot of money. Then you use that money to fund the developers, to find the scientists who make some new algorithms or to fund some marketing team. Um, the problem of those funding strategies is uh, they are not sustainable in a way that what if the money run out? For instance, if a cryptocurrency purely based on donation money, what if the donation money runs out? then suddenly you don't have the money to hire the developers. So suddenly the software will stop being maintained. Then uh, the, the less and the less people will start to use the software and the cryptocurrency will die out. So alternatively, there are some other funding strategies, more sustainable. For instance, we see a model like uh, Zuko with Zcash. When a miner uh, gets some uh, block reward, certain percentage, say 10%, 20%, will go to that company. And that company will in charge of the developing, maintaining, marketing, etc. So that's one way of doing it. And another way is like a dash governance system. You take the money from the, uh, also from the miners, like let's say 10%, 20%, you put it into account called a treasury account. Then later you decide how to use it. So the main difference between the aforementioned, uh, except the dash, aforementioned way of handling the, the money, the funds, is centralization vs decentralization. So for the organization-based funding management, or the, the company-based funding management, um, the biggest problem is the risk of centralization. So who is going to decide how the money is going to be used uh, and, uh, and uh, how they are going to develop the next generation of the, the protocol, etc. A very small group of people and not the actual user, certainly not the majority of the stakeholders. So uh, if you are, you are looking at uh, the, uh, for instance, the Dash, they, they are trying to resolve the problem by making the Dash system have a treasury system and supposedly everybody can join to participate in the voting and uh, then the de decision making process can be more decentralized. Uh, but there are a few problems with the Dash governance system so far. It's great as a first step, but we also have saying it does not have privacy. And when it does not have privacy, at, as an existing one, when it does not have privacy, which means it does not support 
the freedom of choice for the voter to vote uh, because it may subject to coercion. Uh, if there's no privacy and you don't uh, assume the underlying uh, blockchain system give you fully anonymity, then if anybody can see how you voted, then uh, basically uh, you, you can sell your vote, for instance, and maybe someone will also coerce you to vote in a certain way, then it will affect the soundness of the voting result and also does not represent true democracy. So the project we are working on, the treasury system, uh, want to resolve this to bring a next generation treasury system that is private, that is coercion resistant, and that support some new fancy term called liquid democracy. I will mention it later, what's liquid democracy. Um, so first, let's have a look how the money comes from. Um, there are three main resources of the treasury. One, supposed to be um, mint. So basically, uh, it's like a, a Bitcoin. Every block, you mint 50 coins at the beginning. And now it's 12.5, etc. half every, every four years. So a treasury system uh, may have a treasury account. And that account, at each block, you may mint certain amount of coins. Second is tax, so taxation. For some blockchain system, you create all the coins at the beginning. Then basically, if you start to main coin, you may create unnecessary inflation. But those blockchain system, we can take tax from the miners block reward, such as Zencash, such as Dash governance system. Let's say we take 10%, 20%, the block reward as a taxation and fit it to the treasury account. And the third way is donation. Um, donation is not a sustainable, so uh, it, it's there to address the current uh, issue with the charity account. So if you think this uh, treasury as a charity, someone give a donation to this treasury account, then uh, we can actually make the charity more transparent by using the treasury system to do so. Now, um, next question, what is liquid democracy? That's the key word. Sorry. So if we have a very uh, small amount of uh, people, very small set of people, typically the best way to achieve democracy is called uh, direct democracy. So we have an issue, yes, no, and everybody will directly vote for this, uh, for this issue. For example, if I propose a project, and anybody can vote for yes or no, directly when we have a small amount of people. When the number of nodes going bigger than this, let's, uh, let's give you another example. When the number of nodes going bigger, then uh, it's like a country election. Nowadays, we're using so-called representative democracy. So we actually have a fixed set of delegators Nobody can vote directly on this issue. You can delegate your vote to either one of them, and they will vote on your behalf, either yes or no. And then we count the result. OK. That's called a representative democracy. There's a small problem with this setting is uh, maybe because this set of uh, people are fixed, maybe you don't trust one, any one of them, but you have to delegate your vote to them. That's by, by design. And or maybe for a particular issue, none of them are actually familiar with those issues, but they have to vote because that's their duty. So what is a liquid democracy? Liquid democracy aim to, aim to make a hybrid system between these two. 
So let's say we have a bunch of people for different issue, different of different people of them are expert, are familiar with. We are going to vote for yes, no. If you are a voter, you might vote directly, maybe because you really care about the outcome of the, this issue, or you really want to express your opinion about this issue, or you are actually an expert, you really do not want to delegate to anybody else. You can vote directly, or if you are not familiar, you can delegate your vote, voting power, to someone you know, not a fixed set, anybody you trust, you know, and that guy can even delegate further if they want, and that guy can also directly vote if he's already an expert. So a liquid democracy basically says any voter can either vote directly to the issue or delegate their voting power to someone, anyone they trust, and those guys can either delegate further or vote. So a, a rough graph could be like that. So then we count the votes. So um, such kind of system, we do have some mm, realization, but not so secure realization in reality. For instance, Google has a, an experimental project called the Google Vote. It tried to implement liquid democracy using the social network, uh, Google+. Plus. Um, it does not have privacy. But as I mentioned before, if a system does not have privacy, may be subject to coercion, may be affect the soundness of the election result. So we want privacy. And uh, for many, many years, nobody has been proposed the, the liquid democracy e-voting system with very good security considerations. And uh, at Lancaster, uh, we actually implemented the world first liquid democracy e-voting system with very high probably secure security guarantees, uh, and we implemented it. Um, for the treasury system, we did uh, a few more tweaks to make it more decentralized. Because if you think about uh, the, uh, the environment of the blockchain and the environment of traditional e-voting, the traditional e-voting have a centralized, usually small scale or centralized election authorities who is in charge of the election. But uh, for the blockchain, there's no such authority. So we want to further make decentralization of it. Um, OK, so let's have a look at the big picture first, then go back to the voting. So uh, it has this, let me also open, remove this. It has three phases. First, pre-voting. In a pre-voting phase, um, anyone can propose a proposal. So you can propose you can propose a project. So in the pre-voting phase, anybody can propose a project, and uh, the users can register themselves if they want to be a voter, or they want to be an expert, or they want to be participating in the election committee. By the way, not uh, necessary you register as election committee, we will let you be. Just uh, show your hands, and then later on, we will run some cryptographic algorithm to select a small set of election committee members and with certain assumptions, we can guarantee majority of this set will be honest. OK, so voter. If we, uh, a node or a user want to be voter, you need to deposit or lock certain amount of money. Um, 
the, the exact amount depending on the underlying blockchain system, depending on the total amount of the coin supplies, etc. Uh, the expert, they are like the normal voter. The only difference is uh, they actually, by, by, by declare they are expert, they now can receive uh, delegations. Uh, in a treasury system, the voter will receive the incentive, the, the reward, proportionally to their deposited stake. So they will deposit, deposit a stake. They will deposit the stake. And uh, the expert will also deposit a stake, but uh, the expert will get in reward proportionally to the delegations they receive. So for example, if I'm a voter, I deposited uh, 10 coins. And uh, after I cast my vote, after I participate in the voting phase, at the end, we will, I will get some reward proportionally to 10 coins. Now, if I'm uh, an expert, if there are 1 million coins worth voting power delegated to me, then after the voting phase, I will get a reward based on that 1 million delegations. So it's worth, it's worth mentioning uh, a traditional voting. In a traditional voting, each voter have one voting power, have one vote. Uh, in blockchain, we certainly cannot do that because maybe there are civil attacks. The adversary can generate a lot of vote, uh, fake voting accounts, then start to vote. So we definitely need to put a minimum amount of stake to guarantee that you need certain amount of stake to be a voter, for example, to prevent a denial of service attack. And another thing is that we want to assume um, the majority of a stake is a hold in good people's hands. So um, if a voter cast a ballot, his voting power is calculated proportionally to the amount of stake he deposited. If this is an expert, his voting power is based on the amount of stake he deposited and based on the amount of voting delegations he received. Well, for example, if I'm a voter, I have 100 coins, I delegate to the expert. Now, the expert get uh, my voting power corresponding to 100 coins. Then the expert can vote on my behalf. So committee members. Committee members, uh, it's a role. So their, their job is to participate in the election take in charge of the election process, make sure the election terminates, prepare the election, calculate the election result, announce the election result, sign the result, and, and uh, enforce the, the execution, post-election execution, which I will mention them later. So now the next phase, after certain period, the voters, the experts, some people want to register as uh, committee members, are all registered, then we go to the voting phase. In a voting phase, at the beginning of the voting phase, uh, we use the idea like a cryptographic sortition. We use some seed, a random seed, um, coming derivated from the underlying blockchain. So uh, note that it uh, has uh, a different concept than the proof of stake. In a proof of stake system, you are using such kind of seed or what we call beacon. You are using such kind of seed or beacon to guarantee consensus. But the treasury system are built on top of the blockchain layer. So the consensus already done. But we are using this seed to select a small set of committee members. So now the first thing is uh, the, the committee election phase. Um, we use some cryptography algorithms to use a seed, supposed to be random, supposed to be unpredictable, to select a set of committee members among those who registered, 
proportional, well, the probability you get selected is proportional to the amount of stake you put. With the assumption that uh, if the majority of the stake is good, then the majority of the committee members are good. It's a small set of committee members. They will be in charge of the election process. So after they get elected, the first thing they do is to set up the election parameters, such as the key set up. They will do a decentralized distributed threshold cryptographic uh, algorithm to set up the election key and to put it on the blockchain. And once they set up this, all the voters can start to submit their ballots. So it's called the ballot casting. For voters, the ballot may contain two sort of uh, behaviors. One is delegation, one is voting. Oh yeah, it's worth mentioning why in, in the history there are not so many good uh, system or secure system can achieve liquid democracy. Is because of there's a one conceptual barrier. People think delegation phase must happen before the voting phase because of the, the concept coming from the, the representative democracy. Let's say everybody first, uh, first delegate, then those representatives start to vote. But uh, when you are talking about the blockchain, can we merge these two phases? Why I have to first delegate, then those guys to vote? Can I do them simultaneously? That's a conceptual breakthrough. First, everybody need to uh, clear because that's a conceptual barrier. Uh, because in blockchain, you may vote while you are delegate. Uh, oh, sorry, you may, you may vote directly while someone else is delegating. Well, why doing that? Because that gives you maximum privacy. Otherwise, people just by looking at, oh, this guy actually casted his ballot way before that guy, which means this guy actually is uh, delegating to someone because uh, nobody else is casting a vote yet. That guy now start to cast a vote, then he definitely did not delegate to anybody. He definitely cast, cast a vote directly. That's a privacy violation. So we want to group them together. We want uh, a ballot can simultaneously represent to a delegation ballot or a, a direct vote. Okay, when you, you are a voter, you are allowed to indicate yourself who you want to delegate to, and you can also indicate uh, the, the direct uh, vote opinion. So for each project, you can vote yes, no, abstain. The same for the voter, the same for the expert. Just one exception, the voter can actually delegate further. You can decide which expert to delegate. So you cast the ballot, of course, uh, we have a, a lot of fancy zero-knowledge proofs to guarantee the correctness of the ballot. OK, now, the third phase is a post-voting phase. After everybody has casted their ballot, the election committee members will do the tally. First, calculate the tally, announce the tally, give necessary zero-knowledge proofs to show. By the way, when I say zero-knowledge proofs, usually it's non-interactive and succinct. But, uh, but uh, do not uh, uh, miss it with a snark because it's, uh, it's a fixed term, stand for a very small group, a small set of technology of zero knowledge technology. So if we use non-interactive zero knowledge proofs, that doesn't mean we must use a SNARK, but a SNARK could be one small part of it. Okay, so now you have a tally, you proved the tally is correct. Then you need to do some uh, post-election actions, for example, execution. So at the end of the treasury system, the proposal will be ranked. Ranked based on the amount of yes minus the amount of no, so the net yes. Okay? So if, uh, if a system have five people voted for yes, 
the others all abstain, never participated, then this system should be better than a system have uh, six people voted for yes, four people voted for no. That's uh, our understanding. So you rank the project according to the difference between yes or no. And we actually have a cutoff line. If some project, the, the percentage of yes minus the percentage of no, for instance, is less than 10%. So basically, less than 10% of people think more favorable to fund the project. This project will not be considered in the ranking. Even the treasury system still have money. So now we rank the project, let's say P1, P2, P3, P4, etc. Then there's a cutoff line. OK, below that, the, the amount of yes minus the amount of no is too low, below some threshold. So we do not consider. Now we start to fund the project one by one. So, OK, let's look at how much money we got in the treasury system. How much money this project wants. If the, the project wants a certain amount, then OK, we take this. Then we found the next. Do we still have money left? OK, this is also possible. Maybe at a certain stage, we run out of money. Then we cut off here. For example, this is the last project we found. Then we cut off here. So the execution will be we found those projects from the treasury account. Then we reward the committee members, we reward the expert, we reward the voters. For the voters, as I mentioned before, reward is based on their participation, based on the proportional to their stake. For expert, proportional to their delegations, because we want to avoid uh, uh, the malicious uh, uh, user to claim they are expert, actually they are non-expert. So if there is an expert who received zero delegation, he receives zero reward because nobody delegates to him. He actually did not contribute to, to, the, to the voting at all. Uh, for the committee members, if they behave honestly, they get a reward. If they refuse to, for example, open the tally, some of them may refuse to open the tally, and their deposited amount will get, uh, will, will get uh, uh, for example, a discount or a punish, depending on the actual setting. Um, the system currently is designed in such a way, if a majority of the election committee members decide to open the tally result, the tally result will be open. Otherwise, the tally result cannot be open uh, because it's due to privacy. Um, however, um, we can show mathematically with a good quality of the seed, uh, with the majority of the stake uh, are good, we actually can guarantee with very high probability uh, majority of the members in the election committee are good. In the worst case, maybe due to some very unexpected event, for instance, majority of the stake holds in the adversary's hands. For instance, some of the cryptographic primitive, um, such as uh, the hash function, is broken. The majority of the committee members may be all bad. For example, all the, all the election committee members are malicious. What they can do? Um, in current design, the only thing they can do is uh, to prevent the election from uh, terminating. And well, as a set side effect, they can learn how the voter votes because they can decrypt the ballots. Well, necessarily we need that because they can calculate the tally, which means definitely they can decrypt the ballots. Well, for instance, if there's only one vote voted and they need to be able to pronounce the tally, which implies they actually need to be able to decrypt that vote. Okay, so other than that, they know how you voted they can block the election from terminating. They cannot change the election result. They cannot change the tally result. They cannot deviate it. It's guaranteed by end-to-end -end verifiability. And this is the first system. We can support liquid democracy. We give the end-to-end -end verifiability. And we prove in universal, compos universal composability model, which is the UC. Um, um, so, let me go on for the, for the general picture. 
So in a general picture, we have a, we have a decision making. We have a bunch of treasury. coming from uh, mint, from tax, from donation. And uh, we have a bunch of people who want to be expert. And we want a bunch of people who want to be voter. A lot of people who want to be voter. They will cast their ballot to the decision making process, or they can delegate their ballot to this guy, their voting power to the expert, and the expert can vote. All this are backed up with a stake. So it has uh, the stake escrow. So everybody has a stake escrow. Now, at the end, we can actually calculate what is the total amount of percentage for the stake participate in the election making. Oh, there's a committee. And then the committee will announce the result, tally result. Based on the tally result, we actually start to execute. Oh, um, we still need another party uh, proposals. So we have proposals, project proposal. So there are certain project owner make a proposal, and then we have the treasury, let's say once per month, we have this process. Now the voters comes, the expert comes, they jointly do a collaborative decision making, and the committee take this and uh, to give the uh, execution. Um, okay, so as um, because we need a seed or a beacon to select the committee member. So actually at the end of the election phase, the committee member will do a coin flipping. Well, because we already have the uh, public key crypto system, the coin flipping is quite easy. It's uh, much more efficient than a coin flipping from, uh, from the scratch. So they do produce an encryption of a seed. And at the beginning of the next voting epoch or voting phase, those amount of uh, committee members will decrypt that seed so that we can use that seed to select a new set of uh, committee members, a new set of committee members, and then the system can go on. Okay, so what is missing? Cost. How to minimize the cost? Um, one way is via random sampling like a cryptographic sortition. Let's say we have a lot of people want to participate in the decision making. Uh, we can randomly sample, let's say 10% of them. Then we basically reduce the amount of cost by, by one tenth, 10%. 10%. Uh, then if the decision making process give a very good uh, margin, very good uh, separation, then basically we can use the randomly sampled, uh, sampled uh, voting result as the general result. Um, another way is like what we did in the liquid democracy form. So let's say I'm a voter, but uh, I can choose not to participate. I can delegate my ballots to some other expert. And the, the expert can uh, keep delegation further, or the expert can directly participate in the decision making. So for each project, the voter vote yes, no, abstain. For each project, the voter can delegate to dip different experts because they are domain experts. 
The expert can be familiar with one project, can be not familiar with some other project. Um, in the future, so what's the future? Um, in the future, what we're going to do, um, if you look at this decision-making process, it's about the same as, as a, a governance system because the core part are the same, a decision-making, collaborative decision-making. So at some point, we want to upgrade the system to handle uh, software fork, for example, uh, hard fork, soft fork, to have a, a governance system on top of the treasury system, use the same decision-making protocol. Or uh, hypothetically, uh, we can uh, even make uh, the underlying cryptocurrency more resilient. For instance, there's uh, sometimes due to emergency situations, there is uh, a need or the, uh, on, the, on the liquid, on the circulated coins. For example, uh, um, maybe at some moment, we instantly, the market really need a lot of coin at that time. Hypothetically, we can use the treasury system to do QE because if a majority of the stake want to do the QE, they can actually do it. So instead of we have a regular money supply, we can actually alter the money supply process with the decision making, collaborative decision making. That's one way. Um, in the future, we are going to deploy, uh, currently, the system has been implemented uh, as a proof concept, we do have a benchmark. Uh, we currently are in process of uh, developing the first system uh, in collaboration with Zen Cash uh, to integrate our system with their system to tailor make the parameters uh, to make sure it is suitable for that uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, but in general, uh, this treasury system is uh, based on modular design, can be suitable for any blockchain, any cryptocurrency. Uh, it does not uh, necessarily rely on smart contract. Uh, um, but for each uh, cryptocurrency, we have uh, certain parameters. They need to be tailor-made. For example, how to fund the treasury. Really. Uh, Sometimes mint is not good for some uh, cryptocurrencies. Mint is, uh, is good for some. Uh, for example, if we, we want to use the treasury system for charity, then maybe donation would be the major source. Um, and uh, how to define the minimum amount of uh, stake the voter need to deposit, the minimum amount of stake the expert need to deposit, and the minimum amount of stake the, the committee members need to be uh, deposited. Uh, all these are depending on the underlying cryptocurrency, are depending on the blockchain. So uh, the treasury system has a modular design, has a lot of parameters need to be tuned. We currently are having some uh, game theoretics to, uh, analyzing those parameters. And uh, the first pivot system we are going to do with uh, Zencash. Uh, probably in 2018. Um, the academic paper will be submitted for peer review and will be available on archive online. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gives you some rough idea about the treasury system. Of course, I hide a lot of details about the uh, collaborative decision-making process, how to support the liquid democracy, because uh, it's, it's an academic paper, unpublished paper. I don't want to review too much detail, but uh, stay tuned. I will put uh, the, the details on uh, archive very soon, potentially by the end of this year. Thank you.